And welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, welcome to CIRS and to the Kira workshop on writing women into Wikipedia, information creation, and peer review. So glad to see you all here. I'm Elizabeth Winucha. You can call me Liz. I'm operations manager here and responsible for these workshops. Over to our uh, moderators for the day, Pascalia Terzi and uh, uh, Professor Lissandu. Uh, so I, uh, I guess all of you are already familiar with Wikipedia and I saw from the answers that you gave uh, in the registration form that you, some of you really know in depth some of the workings behind the Wikipedia. But um, I'll just uh, start with the five pillars. Some things you might already know and some things might be new to you. Uh, so first of all, what is uh, Wikipedia, right? It's an encyclopedia. And an encyclopedia is a special form of uh, trying to transmit the information. So it's different than, let's say, a journal article, a monograph, etc. Um, in the uh, emails that you have received from uh, these, you must have this presentation with you. Uh, so please, if it's not uh, too much bother to you, open the presentation and uh, you can click on the link that says there are five pillars and you can see more details about uh, all of the five pillars in Wikipedia. Uh, so feel free uh, to read it by yourself. Uh, inside its description you will see even more links. Uh, I will not go through all of the details uh, because uh, why do this? Because you will also see uh, in the progression of the workshop that Wikipedia is really a really large and sometimes chaotic tool. And even the, uh, its creators, it says that you don't need to be an expert to start, to start writing the Wikipedia, editing and contributing information. Okay? So we will go through some basic stuff and then uh, you are free to do your own research and learn more about Wikipedia. So as we said, the first pillar is it's an, an Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, a special form of transmitting uh, information, a type of uh, transmission of information. But uh, as you might know, uh, there are various types of encyclopedias, right? Uh, we have a general one like the Britannica, for example, but we also have subject encyclopedias, uh, which means they are focused on a specific uh, topic, let's say, and they go uh, in a little bit in more detail uh, to that topic. Wikipedia uh, actually is also a subject uh, encyclopedia because it has so many contributors, which means uh, there are a lot of experts and a lot of time for people to go into a lot of different topics. And then, Wikipedia is written from a neutral point of view. So, uh, that's important, although you must hear a lot of times in the news that uh, okay, Wikipedia is biased and everything, but the goal is to be written from a neutral point of view. Of course, it doesn't happen every time, as in every article, right? And the uh, professor Mkhanko will explain some maybe reasons behind the things and everything. So what does it mean by neutral point of view is, of course, some articles, they are just about facts, but some articles will be about issues that might have a debate behind them, right? And hidden debates for that, and even for, for recent uh, issues. Uh, what we need to keep in mind is at least try to present all the sides uh, of an argument and of a debate, uh, or at least the most important ones, the most influential ones, uh, in um, civilized and uh, neutral manner. Then Wikipedia is free content that anyone can use, edit, and distribute. This has a lot. This pillar has a lot of implications behind it. First one and the, the most, how to say, obvious one is uh, about copyright, right? Okay? A lot of encyclopedias will have uh, some images maybe or some piece of uh, music or I don't know. Um, but in order to publish it, like in Britannica, they will pay for that. Uh, the publisher will pay for the use of that image. In Wikipedia, because there's no such thing, you have to make sure that everything that you upload um, is under uh, fair use uh, copyright uh, uh, principles, right? So it, it might be either a picture that you take yourself and you say, okay, now this picture can be uh, used uh, freely and I don't have much money for it. Uh, or if you use something like a picture from a, from a book, a scan, you have to make sure that it's 
uh, that copyright has uh, finished. So then, uh, the fourth pillar, uh, the editor should treat each other with respect and civility. Why they say this? Because of the third, the third rule, because everyone can edit, uh, sometimes what you have written might uh, get, get deleted and then you might get angry and go back to Wikipedia to the top pages and start writing furiously about uh, how, why did you delete this and this editor is uh, not a neutral editor, etc. etc. So these things happen in Wikipedia, but, it sh and, but the arguments should be resolved in uh, as uh, possible a civilized uh, manner and that's why they have this pillar there about respect and civility. And finally, uh, Wikipedia has no film rules. Uh, so as, as I said, and we will explain a little bit later, uh, you do have some, so the five, the five pillars, for example, they're not exactly rules. It's just things that you have to keep in mind when you create your own content there. Uh, but everything has an exception, and you will see that editors, uh, if you follow the discussions in Wikipedia on how they create articles, uh, you might see varying points of view of what is accepted and what is not uh, accepted. Um, it doesn't mean, of course, that you can write anything you like because then someone else will come and delete it. But in general, you don't have to be an expert in order to create something. Uh, so, first of all, it's not a paper encyclopedia, and this actually has a lot of uh, indications, right? And the first one is that uh, it has links. So one of the major benefits of a tool like this and of the internet in general is the addition of this feature, of this uh, possibility, uh, that you can very easily verify uh, through links uh, as something that is being said in Wikipedia. You can very easily uh, go to another topic uh, that is related to what you're reading or what you are creating. And you have, as a creator, you have a responsibility to if something that you mentioned, there is something uh, already in Wikipedia, you have a responsibility to uh, link to it, right? So that you can you create a piece of content that is uh, uh, nicely linked to, to other kinds of information. So encyclopedic content uh, means that it's not a dictionary. So when you create an article, you don't only give a definition of the event or of the person or of the um, you know, the phenomenon that you want to make uh, content, but you can include definitions that might come from different sources and they can be multiple in order to clarify uh, the content that you are creating. Uh, it's not, Wikipedia is not a publisher of original thought, which means everything that you uh, write there, and uh, it needs to have um, something already published about it, and you need to reference it, right? So if, for example, uh, you have a great experience in a kinder thing, or you have a family member who has lived through historical events, that's great, uh, but uh, Wikipedia is not the place to write about it. Uh, everything that you write, you should back it up with evidence, uh, which is then in, uh, given uh, in the references or in the links. Uh, another very important thing uh, and that a lot of people might have uh, problems understanding what it is, is not a soapbox or a means of promotion. And especially for us, that uh, we will write some biographies, always remember to uh, write from a neutral point of view, as we said before, because otherwise if you, if your article sounds like your, uh, it's like the personal website of the person that you are writing about, uh, it might get deleted. Okay, so you need to uh, be sure that um, you are not using too many adjectives, for example. Uh, you don't um, promote opinions of your opinions or other people's opinions about the person that you are writing, etc. Or any uh, Then, Wikipedia is not a blog, web hosting service, social networking service, or a memorial site. So please don't write, for example, this person, the community loves them very much. Uh, you can write about maybe their, uh, their involvement with the community and if there is some uh, evidence of that, they might get some award, you can write about the award, but not what uh, something that sounds like, um, uh, you know, you are writing about uh, the New York Times, the DC uh, section, for example. Uh, and lastly, Wikipedia is 
is not a manual, guidebook, textbook, or scientific journal. Because, as we said, scientific journals, this is a place where you publish original thought and research. It's not a manual for you to operate machines or learn how to, I don't know, fix a computer or something like that. You can, of course, take ideas from there, but uh, if something breaks, uh, you cannot blame Wikipedia for it, because it's not a manual for, uh, you know, that represents a product or something. Um, I think I'm done. for organizing this event. Thanks for coming and joining us on this venture. And uh, I'd also like to acknowledge Pascalia for this initiative. This is why librarians are important. So I'm going to have a brief presentation on gender bias as it pertains to Wikipedia. But just before I discuss gender bias and Wikipedia, I just want to qualify that although we've organized um, this workshop around women, um, there are other biases that exist on Wikipedia. And we can only manage, we have to manage our time and space, you know, there's biases of geography, biases of ideology, perspectives, world views, you know, especially because of the dominance of um, Wikipedia by people from certain demographics. So we are just picking one and trying to do a little bit of work to address one of those biases in the small way that we can in this contained workshop. And so that's just to acknowledge. Now, um, when you come to Wikipedia itself, one of the things that um, I've learned is that the biases in Wikipedia are shared by other encyclopedic endeavors. So Wikipedia is not unique. Um, you have scholars like Joseph Rigol and Lauren Drew who have done comparative studies between, for example, the Encyclopedia Britannica and Wikipedia. And they found that if you look at uh, in the Encyclopedia Britannica, it has its own flaws, its own gaps, its own misrepresentation. And of course they get better because Wikipedia is a more established institution. You know, when you talk about, uh, no, not Wikipedia, Britannica is a more established institution, a more established encyclopedia, because it spans centuries, as opposed to Wikipedia, which is a fairly recent creation. So Britannica has gotten better, but its history reminds us of the world in which Wikipedia was created and how some of these biases are passed on from generation to generation and they impact the way we pursue the world today. So there's an often cited study by a historian named Gillian Thomas. And she did a study of Britannica's 11th edition. And uh, one of the things she noted was that when you looked at that edition, women were relegated to matters of social and purely feminine affairs. And uh, one editor actually said that um, as, you, as you review it, you see that they are perceived as acting as pedantic handmaidens to the wide-ranging suite of male intelligence. So women kind of are like their company men. And then men do things, and women are sort of in the background of men as they do, as they act and produce policy and impact. And this is followed by other works of reference. So uh, dictionaries, for example, are works of references, just like encyclopedias. And the first one was, or what approximates what we could think of a dictionary today, was uh, put together by a man called Robert Cordray. It was called the Table Alphabetical. And uh, he created it in his own words, quote, gathered for the benefit and help of ladies, gentle women, or any other unskilled person. So this uh, dictionary was created in the early 17th century. And in his mind, men didn't need it because men already knew. But women and other unskilled persons needed the dictionary. And there's also a general bias, uh, there's a perception that women don't have the intellectual capacity 
to participate in endeavors that require reason and thought. So John Raskin is quoted as a Victorian art critic, and he advised that women should be able to access knowledge only quote that it may enable her to understand and even to aid the work of men. That is, a woman ought to know the same language or science only so far as it may enable her to sympathize with her husband and his pleasures and those of his friends. So this is the perception generally that was then reproduced in the contents of encyclopedias, where women would not feature, or when they did feature, they would be featuring basically as appendages of men. One person cited an entry, 1942, Mary Rita. Um, she, she looked at the entry song, and women didn't appear, it was as if they didn't sing. And yet, even in Europe, there was a long tradition of women composing music, especially within the church as nuns. So why do we need to take note of this? We need to take note of this because there are reflections of societal norms, mores, values that have been passed through generations in different forms and in different permutations. And they impact the upbringing of children and the social environment in which they become adults. There's a complex maze of subtle and unsubtle signals that future generations receive that influence their, influence their choices in life. So how they raise their sons, how they raise their daughters, and how their offspring will later on act in the decisions that they will make when they're in positions of power. As I'm sure you've all had are underrepresented in ICT and IT in general. In Computer-related fields, according to Gosh and a number of scholars, so this, was, this study was done in around 2002, um, only 27% of uh, computer science-related fields were women, were female. When you look at uh, what is called FLOS, you know, the community that deals with open source software, you know, it's an open source system, women's representation by 2002, it was just 1.1%. 1.1%. So that gives you an idea of just how dire things are, even as the internet is becoming an established mode of work and a part of our lives. And it's important because it impacts content. Wikipedia itself is aware that content is impacted by the participants of uh, the people who edit these pages. So in 2004, it set up a project called Countering Systemic Biases. And uh, it was an acknowledgement that there are systemic biases based on the demographics of the contributors and um, predominantly Western orientation of the contributors of Wikipedia. And, um, Scholars who studied Wikipedia contributors say that about 16% of them are women. It is a problem because reportedly women are not being treated equally as men in the community. So the editors whose posts stay on the Wikipedia page, you know, on which subjects, etc., etc., how many times they are edited, which ones are deleted. So that the process of not just getting people to put content on women, but getting that content to stay there is an issue. Amanda Filipacci, who was writing for the New York Times in 2013, described a controversy where women novelists were excluded from the category American novelists to be included in the specific category American women novelists. So the, the neutral American novelist implicitly was gendered male. And then a different category, there was a suggestion that a different category be created for American women novelists. And the risk of that sort of dichotomy is usually that the category of women will become peripheralized. And then that central American novelist that is male would become the B category. 
So there was a debate on this issue. And just the fact that there was that debate shows us that a lot of those um, perceptions from the early 20th century that Julian Thomas and other scholars were writing about, they still exist in different forms. So we need to be alert to them. So what are the implications of these sorts of perceptions on method? So number one, um, as Pascalia noted, Wikipedia only permits the use of secondary sources. You can't do your own research, no matter how excellent, and upload it on Wikipedia as an original source. So why can this be a problem? Now, we can't do anything about it here. We have to stick by the rules. But it can be a problem because a lot of times people who edit Wikipedia reproduce the attitudes and the language of the sources they're using. So if you're using sources that um, are derogatory or erase women or um, are sexist in one way or another, those biases can be very easily reproduced on the Wikipedia entry. Of course, when you are writing a staff article or even a major article on Wikipedia, you should put it in your own words um, and then cite the source that you're using. But people's abilities or um, levels of assiduousness vary, and some people are not that para, and others are just oblivious to the flawed sexist reproductions that they are generating on Wikipedia. So scholars have suggested that Wikipedia should provide tools to enable editors to avoid reproducing these sorts of biases, for example, the manual of the American Psychological Association, that has guidelines on the use of language. And then lastly, uh, there's been a suggestion that there should be an affirmative action for women in the notability guidelines for Wikipedia. So Wikipedia's notability guidelines are uh, factors, for example, as Pascalia mentioned, you know, maybe somebody having got an award, or even if they didn't win the award, that they were nominated for it, or shortlisted in some way. You know, sometimes you see someone saying, oh, so and so was shortlisted for this prize in literature or something of the sort. Um, but the problem that people see in these sorts of guidelines, you know, widely recognized, significant honor, uh, contribution that has an enduring historical record in his or her specific field, is because uh, sometimes, again, women generally tend to miss from a lot of uh, records because people in those fields did not recognize them or erase them. So if your notab notability guideline is you know, significant contribution in history, if it, does, if it not, doesn't exist um, in a secondary source, it makes it hard to include. Uh, Mr. Shapiro have looked at this in relation to women in philosophy. And they, they argue that feminist historians of philosophy have argued that the historical record is incomplete because it omits women philosophers and it is biased because it devalues any women philosophers it forgot to omit. So they are either not on the record or if they are on the record they are diminished. In addition, Feminist philosophers have argued that the philosophical tradition is conceptually flawed because of the way its fundamental norms like reason and objectivity are gendered men. So that turns into this huge cloud of bias in which everybody operates oblivious of the omission or denigration of human philosophers. And if you have guidelines for a platform that are so tightly defined around notability and recognition in history, significant contribution to a field, and the field does not recognize the women therein, then it makes it hard for people to write those articles about those women, and it also impacts links that are created to those articles. So I'm going to stop here. Um, and I'm going to now pass it on to our next, I think, uh, Pascalia will proceed. 
and encourage you now you have your own chance, your little bit of history, your opportunity to make a little bit of difference and also engage other people. So uh, welcome once again and we look forward to what you will bring to the table because we are we are you're learning from us but we're also going to be learning from you. Okay?